This week's webcast is brought to you by the Marijuana Investment Private Retreat, an intimate three-day event featuring industry leaders and investment professionals in a luxury setting in Denver, Colorado. Tickets are on sale now at www.marijuanainvestmentretreat.com. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. This is Chris with Potstocks.com and it's March 7th. Overall, the sector was relatively flat this week. Some winners include OXIS up over 100% and ERBB hit its 52-week low on Tuesday, then rallied to close the week up 34% from that low. In stock news this week, Advanced Cannabis Solutions announced plans to change its name to General Cannabis Corporation to better reflect their business and market served. The ticker symbol CANN will remain unchanged. ERBB announced that their Zaz network is online. The front end of that network is at zaznetwork.com. Currently the site only offers a static Google Map APIs that show the dispensary locations for the Zaz. Um, evidently these will become dynamic as each dispensary uploads their own individual information. The Mary Jane Group, MJMJ, announced purchase of the Adagio Bed and Breakfast in Denver, Colorado. It's home to the company's first bud and breakfast, and the total purchase price was $1.5 million, uh, $1 million of which was financed by the seller. If you want to stay at the bud and breakfast, go to budandbefast.com. And finally, Indoor Harvest started trading on March 3rd under the ticker symbol INQD. Uh, if you want to find out a little bit more about them, we talked about them in last week's webcast, so just go on back there and check it out. The Canadian Securities Administration issued a press release after it reviewed over 25 companies beginning to operate marijuana businesses. The short version is that the CSA found pretty much all the companies are not providing sufficient and balanced disclosure in their reports. Uh, essentially, the companies are great about getting their company promoted to millions of people, but most of those people don't look into the fundamentals of the companies before investing. Um, it's the same story we keep talking about. There's every incentive for public companies to make themselves seem like the next big thing. Um, so just make sure you're, you're doing your homework, even if you are investing in Canadian stocks as opposed to American stocks. And finally, in private holdings, Forefront and M. Jarden announced they've entered into a strategic partnership this week. Together, they'll be able to provide consulting and business development solutions from cultivation and processing to compliance and retail procedures. This week's cannabis news is brought to you by our sponsor, Elevated Products, LLC, and their latest innovative product, the Groove Tube. The Groove Tube is a unique and highly effective answer to unwanted odor associated with cannabis smoking. Complete with replaceable cartridges and 12 different scents, the Groove Tube offers a fully customizable experience. You can even get your own customized wrap with your business logo or artwork. If you're a retailer looking for a great product, contact the team at GrooveTube.com. That's www.groov-tube.com. All right, so let's dive right into some news. A group of six Colorado sheriffs this week have brought a federal lawsuit against the Colorado state governor. Joining the lawsuit are sheriffs and prosecutors from Nebraska and Kansas. The lawsuit challenges Colorado's recreational law, <clears throat> arguing that Colorado cannot allow people to possess or use marijuana in violation of federal law. The lawsuit aims to close all of Colorado's recreational marijuana stores, as well as overturn Amendment 64's protections for marijuana use and possession. The U.S. Representative from Colorado, Jared Paulus, commented that frivolous lawsuits are likely to continue until federal prohibition is overturned. In Texas, Republican State Representative David Simpson of Longview filed a proposal on Monday seeking to fully legalize marijuana in the state. Uh, what's interesting about this proposal is that it's being framed as a conservative libertarian issue. Uh, Simpson even went so far as to say, God did not make a mistake when he made marijuana that the government needs to fix. Um, it's doubtful that it will be that will gain much steam, but we've argued for a while that legalization is effectively a conservative and libertarian argument, um, and that it will gain bipartisan support when the narrative sort of flips and reflects that sentiment. And last Saturday, Washington, D.C. hosted the Comfy Tree Cannabis Expo. Entrepreneurs met with local officials and businesses to network and discuss the business opportunities presented by legal cannabis business in the D.C. area. All right, let's move on to charts. Last week we anticipated a pullback followed by a good movement for CANL, uh, which is exactly what happened, and the price nearly recovered to $1.55 from $1.40. We expected some buying pressure in MNTR after it dipped below $1, but the chart isn't really playing that out, uh, and on March 3rd the price even dipped below $0.80. Cents. So for next week, uh, GRNH looks like it might present some good swing trading opportunities. Uh, if you look at their chart over the last few weeks, most days have had a uh, huge volatility, and that's great for short-term traders. Uh, WNTR had a pretty wild spike in volume on Friday, uh, and that could translate into a good open on Monday. Um, again, so lots of vol volume and volatility, uh, great for swing trading. 
Alright, I want to close this week by drawing attention to our new events calendar in the top nav bar. Uh, currently we've got two conferences coming up, both the Marijuana Investment Private Retreat and the Marijuana Investor Summit. Uh, these are both going to be great events and both very different, so check out the events page and go visit those sites and buy some tickets. And that's it for this week. Have a great weekend. Stay in the green.